You are listening to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, Episode 55, Pre-Gen Characters and Motivation. Today we talk about pre-gen characters and their motivations. We discuss how to improve your pre-gen characters so they have proper motivation for your story. We also discuss how to ensure all pre-gen characters hit all plot points in the game. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me in person, he'll drive motivation to your players' souls, Jared. Okay, that was better. That was better than last times. Okay, yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to work work through something. I know, it's, it's not easy writing copy. Every now and then, I get one that's gold, and then I get a bunch of duds. You know what's funny? But. I don't even work in the marketing department. I literally got tasked this week to, like, write a marketing thing. I can write shtick. I found out I can. It's not like an impossible task for someone who's never done it. Yeah, but I do technical writing. Like that's that's the the writing I I I, I'm most versed and practiced in. Like, but you write non technical when it comes to game. That's probably something you got out of game. Remember how how you your your wife told you this uh, about how you what was the thing that you needed to make? Like it was like a floor plan or something or. uh... Oh no! It was it was for uh, we were doing our our. Uh, setting up a, a large training venue, and I needed to do a floor plan, and I completely did it from. <laughs> you did, you did it, you did it like it in there, and you're like, you're like, this is so easy. I do this all the time for game. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's it's amazing how skills from game have have poured it over to what I do as a living. <laughs> like, but no, it was it was, it was just funny because like, I do not see myself as like a marketing person. Like, I secretly despise the entire marketing department. Well. Hopefully none of them listen to this podcast. Well, except for one of them. One of them I, I freaking love. We'll so you, you might out. be the one. You might be the one. <laughs> <laughs> figure it out, okay? And put out a whiteboard, and if I see that whiteboard, I'll know you're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I come in, there's a marketing department. <laughs> the whole department's listed. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so what's our topic for this week? So this week we're going to talk about... Um, pre-gen characters and proper motivation and the reason why i wanted to talk about this topic specifically is that i jumped in on a couple of uh of online games and the gms were, were great um I, I really enjoyed the games but every time i get the pre-gen character because they're they're one-shot games they were built for conventions every time i get the pre-gen character i read through the motivation on the character and when we actually get into the shit I always feel like there was a miss in the motivation. How so? Um, so open that up for us a little yeah. bit. Yeah. For example, um, you read through the character and you try to imagine how the character is going to be played. So typically in a one shot game or like a con game uh, or something where you get a pre gen, you're supposed to kind of play it like you stole it. Like you're you're supposed <laughs> to play fast and lose. Okay. But <laughs> if you're going to put motivation and character notes on the character. Um, and the, you expect the players to read that and then play in character as well, you better have a reason why said housewife would want to go into the spooky forest, okay? They better they better have a, a, a reason to, I think, to do that. did you play the housewife? I played a... Uh, in, the, in the last game I played, I played a woman um, who was uh, widowed and, uh, you know, reading about it, you know, you know, basically is, is now taking care of herself. She owns a, a, a store, so she's kind of an independent woman, but it doesn't, it didn't fit. It's not like, like, like has a sense of adventure. Like it seems like she kind of plays things a little close to the, to the, to the vest, um, plays a little cautious. And in general, I play cautious because I play with you and I don't play a lot of one shot con games. So like, again, I should, I should take in the motivation. You know what we should do? Play. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. We should do our podcast from a con. Um, when they when they go back to in person, I'd be happy to do our podcast. That'd be freaking awesome. Con. Okay, continue. Um, Sorry. If you have a suggestion on a con, uh, contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail dot com. Let us know. <laughs> There's only one con. There is Gen Con. There, well, Gen Con is the 
probably one of the closest cons to us. That or Gary Con. Oh, well, the Origins, too. I think Origins travels, though. I mean, Gen Con's pretty huge. I don't know what the rules are about just doing a podcast in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I give no fucks. I follow no laws. Got I'm it. an outlaw. All right. I'm going to get that tattooed. Outlaw. <laughs> but if you want your players to go driving forth on a sense of adventure, make sure that that is written down with the character itself. Like, has an innate sense? Like, I mean, it doesn't need to be spelled out that clearly. Is if bored with running her shop for 35 years and supplying her two children? Well, let, let's take the children out because that would make you a jerk. Um, <laughs> but, like, is bored of running her shop of 35 years and yearns for adventure. Again, because when we got in there, and then the other thing, too, is that is that the players all had... Um, there, there was sort of an event that kind of split the party, and it wouldn't have made sense for my character to go out with the other players there as well. And it's just like, if you want us to all go and encounter the scene that you had planned there, you got to give me the motivation to want to take the leap and go there. After the event happens, I can then logically say that my character has enough motivation now to do stuff that's a little out of the character. Like, oh, I need to go be a part of this. But... Typically, I play it pretty pretty close to the vest, and maybe that that is a, a failure on my part with a with a pre gen character. But again, it's it, not. It's not. You are what you're doing in that situation is playing the character. And the thing is, with that pre gen situation, if I have a pre gen game all developed and I get to make the characters, I'm gonna make sh- dang sure. Every one of those characters matches every uh, plot point, beat, whatever you want to call it, that I want them to hit. Why? I would have made sure that your uh, character, you know, was bored with running the shop for the last 10 years after her husband passed away and yearned for adventure, yearned for danger. Maybe she reads nothing but books of, you know, like my mom books. My mom reads those, those trashy romance novels, you know, and yearns for the the dangerous man and and once once the excitement and adventure you know if, if you've got those pre-made characters you have complete control in this situation because i will have to admit i do not advise writing in like character motivations this is one of the things i actually want to talk about in the the episode is that i is it really it is <laughs> um is to give enough description about who the character is so you kind of know how to how their personality might play out, but to leave things ambiguous and open-ended on the other end. Precisely. Because you want them to not derive how you would perceive the character as the GM, but you want them to put themselves in there as a sense for the sense of adventure, for the sense of purpose, and to kind of be like, the motivation's ambiguous. And so I would go into the spooky forest with everyone even though I should be here rustling up the grub and making sure that we're well fed for the night. And that's what you that's what you actually pl- did. That's why I did. Like and you I played and, the character. And everybody else went out <laughs> and did the other thing. And there was a scene out there. And again, if you're going to do that, you want play especially in a one-shot game um, or a pre-gen game or something like this where it's it's a short, compact con game. You want to make sure that the players go effectively to every scene. They don't have a lot of choice. In they should be shot. the Scooby Gang. Yes, I mean they, they should. Not to not to, but I mean the thing was, and this it, isn't to to knock on the game. So no. Scott, Scott, if you're listening to this, I'm not I'm not knocking anything that you did in the game. I think you did it very well. Um, Absolutely, I, not. I think I think the game was very well. I'm just talking about in general. I'm using this as my guide for motivation think about how i would do right and and when you're looking at pre-gen characters the first thing that uh you know package full of tools man why are you dissing on scott no i'm kidding i love you scott <laughs> Aaron might not but i love you i i'll, I'll play in the next one i'm, I'm looking I'm forward to it i'm playing <laughs> i love those guys i really do uh, i can't wait to to it, so they have invited us to several games, unfortunately, because my butt travels. Unfortunately, because Jer- Jared sometimes is in Timbuktu, and other times he's he's at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I think during the last one, I was in the middle of a software deployment. <laughs> yeah, you were you 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 let out a furious text the weekend before, and you're like, 
I hate life. <laughs> I mean, like, pretty much it was funny. You know, uh, one of the things about a good boss is a boss will stand by you during an adversity. My boss and I stayed up for 36 hours pretty much straight. Now we have a great relationship because we have said shit to each other you shouldn't say to each other. Literally been in the shit together. We have been in the shit together. Um, so back to the point, the, one of the first tools in the toolbox that I want to offer everyone is if you are going to uh, do a pre-gen, pre-canned, um, everyone's doing pre-gen characters, um, you know, everyone thinks the one-shot pre-gen character is something fast. They're like, I'm going to just build it fast. Fast and loose. No, no, no. Just because it's meant for one game doesn't mean that it should be garbage. A one a one shot game can be something of beauty that and, and we talked about this in the one shot game episode that starts off a whole new campaign for you guys. You know, um, you never know when they're gonna be like, This pre gen character was so damn good, I'm gonna take him for the next two years. Well, how cool would that be? You know, that's a reflection of you as a storyteller. Um, so the but the first to the first tool, make Lots of them, you know, I've got four players because I've made this mistake. I've made it in the past. I got four players. I made four pre-gens. Now, granted, in my game, I don't think that I even gave you guys character motivations. It was dot on a sheet, and I'm pretty sure you guys even had to come up with the names. Um, fortunately for me, I have players except for Aaron. Aaron takes like 75 years to make a character. Sorry, I get invested in my you character. You do. <laughs> and I mean, like, as a GM, I'm like, this is free. Awesome, because you make these really great characters that are really thought out. But, you know, as somebody who wants to run a game that night or that century. <laughs> I wanna... Listen, Jared, I'm preparing this one for next century. In the next life, I'll run this one. I'll, run this I'll, f- I'll find you in the next life, and we'll run the game together. That's what we'll do. I'll bury it in a bottle. In... <laughs> <laughs> Put it in a time capsule. Put it in a time capsule. I'll find you. <laughs> so, um... But uh, when, when you look at the, um, uh, the pre-gens, it, you know, you might say I've got four players. And I, I, like I said, I've fallen into this pitfall. I've got four players. I make four pre-gens. Uh, no. If, if you're going to start adding, you know, uh, what the uh, GM did, which was start creating more masterful characters. Now, at the, when I'm talking about when I made four pre-gens, I, I, I was, you know, not – this is not – Tip of the spear, best performance. I literally made pre-gens for, for a slapstick one, one night game. Um, you know, but if you're aiming for something beautiful, you gotta, you gotta up the ante and that's, you know, giving some character motivation, some flesh to the character. Uh, now mind you, this should be for your more experienced, uh, better players that you know are, are going to respect playing the character. If you, if you know, like if you've got a group of four players and what they like to do is, is play the three stooges or four stooges in every game. And that's what you enjoy too, storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to go into that level of detail because no matter what, they're going to take those characters and they're going to boink each other in the eyes and <laughs> um, you know, so um, that's what's going to happen. So you, you don't need that level. But when you've got those players, like if I have Aaron and Brian, Aaron and Brian are, are you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed as a storyteller to have two players that, you know, if I handed them pre-made characters and I, I, you know, I, for some odd reason, I, I put the level of detail to tell Aaron's character that he suffers from severe depression. I would literally have to worry about putting Aaron on suicide watch. That's, that's how well he plays characters. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, um, but as, as a PA suicide and depression are not funny things. They are, if, if you know people who are suffering, please help them. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a big proponent. As, as most of you know, I suffer from mental illness, um, clinical mental illness, so I'm a big proponent of always putting it out there. Um, you know, I'm not somebody uh, who I, I feel like we need to get it out there so people can get proper care and proper help. There's my little PSA. Sorry about that. That was a little off track, off topic. Uh, back, back to it. Um, so make a lot. Um, if I've got four players... I'm going to make eight NPCs. I'm going to double that number. That's a good solid number to have because it's not going to be, um, I put out the four characters, Aaron grabs one right off the bat and it's like, I want this one. Uh, Brian wanted that one too. Ken wanted that one too. Now Ken and, 
Cry on her stuck with. Eh. Now you might have the situation. Everyone wants to play that one character. They want to play the Indiana Jones. Let's let's say it's Indiana Jones. Let let's make this a pulp thing. Mm-hmm. It they wanted to play the Indiana Jones. Nobody wants to play the pilot. Now the trick with making these pre gens. So you're making a lot. None of them have. None of them can be critical to the story coming place. You can't make it where somebody has to play the the, the damn pilot. Uh, guys, I need someone to play a pilot. I don't want to play the pilot. Pilots in the aircraft waiting to take off. Well, but but guys, I need I need a pilot. Screw you. We're not playing the pilot. None of them. None of the characters have to be a pivotal role that have to be filled. Okay. So when you're developing that one shot game with pre gen characters, you have to remember that game cannot have the essential like. I need someone to play this character, this character, and this character. No, they have to be generic enough. And the story has to be generic enough to fit any of the characters that you are putting before your players. So Aaron's um, <clears throat> shopkeep should have been able to fit into that game in any way, shape or form, hit any beat. Um, you know, it should have been made uh, generic. The game should be generic enough to always accept every player into every beat. Um, so it, it's almost twofold. You got to make that the game generic enough to accept all of the, the, uh, the pre-gen characters and the pre-gen characters need to be generic enough to fit the game. So, uh, they can't have that. They can have specialized skills. Don't get me wrong. You can have the archer, but the archer cannot be pivotal to the story. The, the, the end plot point cannot be, they need an archer to shoot the Ruby eye out of the dragon's, uh, statue. Okay. Because someone's going to look at you and say, I don't want to play an archer. Archers are stupid. Someone's going to do it and it, it's going to happen. And it's going to, you're going to be like, crap. Now I got to think on my feet. Now go back to our lessons about dancing. Um, you got to make sure that, you know, if everybody here can use a bow and if you got to cheat, cheat, everyone there can use a bow and when it comes to that time where they got to shoot the ruby eye, I'm going to let them miss once. I'm going to let them miss twice. I'm going to let them miss three times because nobody here is a freaking pro and seems to be able to hit that freaking number. But on the fourth time, when the dragon's about to eat everyone, the real dragon, not the statue dragon, they're going to hit the eye and the ruby's going to fall out. Why? Because that's a freaking awesome story. So I'm going to cheat on their behalf. I'm going to let them fail a couple of times. But, you know, when, when one player is about to be... <laughs> dragon food i'm, I'm going to cheat on behalf of my players and let the ruby fall out of the eye and the dragon just poof, go back to our last episode poof, that's my new thing um <laughs> so players uh your your characters have to be generic enough to meet all plot points your plot points have to be generic to meet all players you need multiple different characters so it, whatever your your anticipated size is let's double that with the amount of players now that we've talked about the generics for success let's talk about specificity Okay, so I think it's really cool uh, to add some motivation in. Why? Because it gives your really serious, hardcore players the opportunity to say, you know what, this is just one night. I want to see what it is playing a woman. What what time period was it in? It was uh, late 1800s. So your, your, your 1890s era, your, I don't know if that's still considered antebellum, I, I guess turn of the century. Your turn of the century era, um, Playing a woman. I wonder what that would be like to play. You know, and your real serious players are going to go, awesome. I've never gotten to play that. I want to experience. I want to explore. And and, and some of them might take off. You never know. Like, I myself am playing a, a female character right now, and it's probably some of the most fun I've ever had in role playing. Um, you know, a lot of it is modeled off my wife. <laughs> and so... I, I, you know, it's fun. Thank God I, I, I married the woman that I married who does not game. Um, but she, she learned enough about role playing so she can at least enjoy my stories. And I have her cracking up because she sees herself in the character, especially in the contents of the purse. Um, cause my wife, literally we had to get her a United States Marine Corps, um, backpack. And this is not a three day assault pack. This thing is like, it's meant for your 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 long uh long range repul- uh, ro- long range reconnaissance patrols or your larps cuz she has so much crap that my wife carries uh but you know it wasn't fashionable enough if we can find that in uh, louis vuitton maybe my wife will use it more um 
but but back to the uh, to the thing at hand, uh, some of your serious players are really going to take that as an opportunity to expand their 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 role playing repertoire. They're gonna even at con games, even if you have uh, the potential of ten players playing, you know, but you you've put it out there that this is going to be a very serious game uh, a, 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 in a con environment. You know, you do have that capability of being like, listen, you're not going to be welcome back tomorrow night. Um, you know, let's say it's a three day con like uh, Gen Con. Listen, you're you're out there making fart jokes. I'm here to make an experience for my players and you're ruining it for the other nine people in the room. So we're going to change the lock on the door. Please get your paperwork. I'm going to manage you out. Um, so, uh, but you know, con games even have that opportunity. If you're like, if you appropriately advertise your, your con game, you know, I'm looking for serious players who are into really expanding and, and, uh, being a character and, and, and an opportunity to play out those characters. Uh, so, you know, with those, how do I handle motivation and handle, how do I handle giving them enough background, but at the same time, not oversaturating them where you're going to have a character like Aaron's where Aaron felt like, okay, I can turn the century woman. I, I don't even have the right to vote yet. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget suffrage did not happen until <laughs> until the 1920s. So um, women didn't even legally could not even vote for president at the moment. And Aaron played it correctly. Um, no, my 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 job and in, in their perspective back then. Well, I'm I'm gonna make dinner. I mean, the the only thing I had as a piece of motivation that would have pushed me in the direction of maybe joining the group of men who went outside to go you know, look at this situation was, uh, that I was an independent woman. Yeah. But even independent in the woman, you're, you're probably just fascinated with the fact that they let you own property. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. You don't have the right to vote yet. Yes. I mean, again, the time period place, everything about it, there were, uh, there were challenges with it. And, you know, again, after the scene happened, I was able to then say my character is going to come join because another another player in the group was like was like well what are you going to do? I, I think he was looking at I'm gonna me, stir those beans. I think he was looking at me to say you know are you going to join us this time? And it's like it's like well I would have joined you the first time, but I need another character to pull me in. I need another character to pull me in. Somebody else has to say we should all go together. Okay. We, 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 we should stick together because there's something icky in the woods. Sa- sa- safety in numbers. Somebody needs to, to do that to get you to move into the situation. And then regardless of how that first scene would have played out, after that, I would have always had motivation to go with the group because hinky shit's happening. Safety in numbers, class. Safety in numbers. Uh, so again, what, one of the things I thought about is, you know, I've thought about, well, how would I do pre gen and, you know, because I, I thought, well, maybe I'll run a game here at some point, you know. For, for I'm already guys. planning on it. And, um, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to, to kind of pay him back for all the, uh, you know, the, basically the kindness of, of letting us join these uh, these games. So I thought about it and I'm like, I'm like, you know, does it start at a pretty simple like, like, you know, choose your kind of give me the just I'll, I'll give you the, the dots are 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 set the way they are. The stats are set the way they are. I've pre-gen that I've made that, but what the character looks like talks like that is, is you, you can tell me what that that is. Okay. They've got a name. I've got a bunch of names. I've got a list of a million names. I'll just give you a name. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've given each one a little bit of motivation. Um, if if I'm not going to let you tell me what they look like and what they talk like and and who they are, you know, they, they tall, short, woman, man, you know, whatever you, you, you have there. And, you know, if I'm not going to give you that, then I'm going to at least give you an open motivation. Um, I, I'm going to give you the ability to kind of choose, like, here are some of the mannerisms of the character. And outside of that, they're always good with, you know, X, Y, Z. 
fill in the blank. Okay. Yeah, and one of the great things to do, and I've done this in the past uh, for character generations for a session zero, is I've created leading questions. Uh, leading questions are great, and they can be done with pre-gens, um, <clears throat> which is you're your shooting, shooting, shoehorning uh, your players into coming up with ways to fit into the game. So, you know, if, if I were to place this character before Aaron, I can tell them their occupation, I can tell them the height, weight, just like Aaron said, you know, hell, I can even tell them, you talk like a 1920s newsy, um, you know, or, or or whatever. But the leading questions help the players form the motivation behind the character. So why does, uh, why does, I'm just going to name your character Annabelle for some odd reason. I don't know why, because I said antebellum, that's why. Uh, so why does Annabelle join this group of investigators putting it on you buddy putting it on you now depending on how much time you have for this you know you might want to make those uh, so former teacher skills time management i know that this my one night session is going to last precisely four hours i'm going to give my players 10 minutes to answer these questions how many questions do you put on there 10 minutes, I can tell you as a former teacher, I'm going to put three questions, three major questions, and that's it. Why? Because you really want to give as much time to the player to come up with the answers as possible. So, you know, why does your character, um, if faced with a scary situation, how does your, what would motivate your character to move into the darkness instead of away from the gunfire? What makes your character or courageous? They're leading questions, but they're open questions. You know, how will your character move in, in? How will your character be brave? There's a great open question. How will my character be brave? When will they show it? How will they show it? Um, so leading questions should should formulate um, the, the the motivation of the character. Mike, why does your character want to be brave? You know, that would be a great question for Annabelle. Why does your character want to be brave? And it forces Aaron to say, well, I'm sick of being a shopkeep for the last 10 years, barely making enough. I, I'm, I'm tired of it. I want to strike out on my own and, 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 and finally be free of this shop that my, you know, my late husband, who I love dearly, uh, tied me to. I'm tired of the same old grind. I want to be brave. Um, so big leading questions like that. Um, you know, if, if you're going with pre-gen for a one-shot, you really got to look at time management because you don't really have a session zero. Yeah, you can't give players half an hour to figure out what their motivation is going to be for the character. That, so you don't have to give Aaron the time that he, that he requires. That's yeah, the time that I require. Again, I'm, I'm happy to look at what it is there, but, you know, effectively what needs to happen is all motivations you'll need to be able to fit all situations within the game. So you know what the points. game. Yeah, all plot points in the game are things that you know. So every character must share common motivation to engage in every plot point. Now, whether or not the character then, whether or not the player decides to take the carrot, is up, to you, them. is up to them at that point. And you should understand then as well when you're when you're dealing with that is that you might have players who, do, who don't take the carrot. So you might have to st- smack with the stick. And get them to go along with the rest of the group. We have a whole podcast on Karen and the Stick coming up. <laughs> so, <laughs> to understand where Aaron, you know, Aaron and I were discussing the the, the situation afterwards. Uh, you know, he and I had a good long talk about it. Um, and, you know, at this point, had Annabelle stayed behind. I don't know why. What was your character's name? Maria? All right. Had Marie stayed behind cooking beans, I would have attacked her with a god dang werewolf and forced her. That werewolf would have done something known as harring and forced them back to the group. She would have been running back to the group. Or it, if the character was armed, I would have forced a gunshot and the group would come to her. Um, either way, the group stays together. Um, you Sometimes you got to force situations. If, you, if your character, just what Aaron said, if your character's not taking, if the player's not taking the carrot, fine, I'll give you the stick. I'll force you to the rest of the group. In a one shot, it's really important to be able to do that. You don't want to have a player who gets who chooses not to engage with the story because there, there aren't a lot of options in a one shot. And I've dealt with that. I, I have dealt with a player who always played the sniper. 
That's what he, but you know what? That's what he freaking loved. He loved just sitting and watching the story unfold. That was him. God bless him. That's what made him happy. Never once did he ever complain. I wasn't, why wasn't I involved? He never said a word. He was just like, ah, you dumbasses. You guys got yourselves in this situation and I was able to fire my sniper rifle and save you all. He just liked doing that. Otherwise, he was perfectly content sitting back. Um, But I also want to add a caveat. I would probably not have attacked you with a werewolf. I probably would have made a couple of snapping twigs that would have scared the bejesus out of you to move back to the group. Um, You know, and whether or not Aaron's imagination takes him to werewolves or in, in all reality, it was too... You get an impending sense that you're being watched. I mean, yeah. like, you're, it's like... And what was he being watched by? You know, two chipmunks that are just like, those beans look fucking delicious. <laughs> I really hope that comes out well in the recording. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're being watched. It's, it's a freaking owl that is watching you. Ooh. But <laughs> let the, you know, it, 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 it's the Alfred Hitchcock, even though I learned that Alfred Hitchcock was just a terrible human being. Um... He is right. The, the 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 monster. What what goes on in your viewers' imagination or your players in this situation? Uh, what goes on in their imagination is ten times worse than you can concoct on screen. Um, you know the the hidden the hidden knife is, is far scarier than the knife shown. Um, that's actually not accurate. If someone actually pulls a real freaking knife on me, I'm much more scared. <laughs> but just I mean, one of the things I just want to. I mean, again, I'm I'm hitting on it again. It's just making sure that the the, the the characters do have the proper motivation to engage with your story elements again, because you know what the the story elements are going to be. And when you make those pre gen characters, um, you know, just again, just make sure that they're going to to ju- to go with the group into the dark forest. Be like, hell no, I'm not making the food today. Like, like we're we'll make the food together when we get back. You're a strong, independent woman. I would have added the word strong. You're independent, but you're also strong. I ain't making no food. Kick over your beans. So pretty much my wife. I or we start rustling up grub, and then it, we, we really need to go take care of this. This is this is a problem, like like safety in numbers. Have somebody drive it. I mean, like you you there's a lot of ways to, to force everyone and, and into that, the group. That is something that you could do. Maybe the impending doom doesn't come upon Aaron. The impending doom comes upon uh, one of your players that you know will move Aaron into the group. You know he'll move to safety. Go back to KYC. No, your no KYP. KYC. No, your players. Your again, when, you, when you're playing, um, when you're playing pre gens, it's almost impossible to KYP. Um, no, I can still know my players and pre gen. It don't matter if I know my players. Well, so again, con but, games. But it's impossible. In a con game, you don't know your players. So I mean, you're you're hoping that. Everything that you've put on the character sheet is enough to, to make sure that the players do that. Or you just have to have compelling plot hooks to make sure that people will go along right. with your story. And then the other thing, too, is, is having out. If you really have a player who's absolutely not going to go along with them, make sure that something's going to happen to that player. Yeah. Just like Jared <laughs> said, make sure that something's going to spook the player and like, ah, running into the forest of the darkness. Yep, and and, and if they're, if they're going to play the characters like, we're like I'm gonna. So there was this old meme that literally had a penguin with a pair of symbols above a polar bear's head, and it was like a GM meme. Like, yeah, we'll do this. The funny thing is, is that uh, if you have players that are like, I do this, make sure that the polar bear can fucking maul them. Um, so why? Because you'll have those players that are like, uh huh. I'm gonna screw with the GM, and when I go run screaming into the darkness. I'm not going to run towards the group. I will maul you in those woods. You have left your circle of protection. You're deciding to go off beat and run into the woods like an idiot in the in the late set. I'm 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 sorry. I would have made sure that a hoot owl would have scared your character straight to the group, or a bear. I don't care. A freaking bear smells the cooking beans. Unless you're intending on fighting a bear, which, as you know, Brian and I have engaged in Aaron's last game. Um, bears are not fun, ladies and gentlemen. They are. They're so hard to kill. Especially mutant bears. Mutant bears are even harder, but the, the fact that regular bears, you know, there, there are rifles, specific rifles and specific calibers and specific gauges you have to use to go bear hunting for a, a bear reason. plus one. Okay, it was... <laughs> a bear plus one is... A bear is deadly, okay? I mean, 
No, no, no. Here's a stick. Go fight a bear. No. Are you crazy? Um, I got a ladle. I'm running towards the group of men who have guns. Oh, I attacked you with so many bears. Dude, it was so scary. <laughs> like, it, had you told me they were normal bears just being controlled by, like, some sort of mind control, it still would have been freaking terrifying. It's a bear. They were supposed to look freakish. That was the whole point. The, the freakish part didn't scare me because, like, to be perfectly honest, Aaron, the the I will be honest with you here. Honesty moment. Um, no, their their freakish demeanor didn't scare me. It was the fact that it was sixteen bears. I don't know how many bears it was. It could have been three for all I remember. But my brain in panic mode registered sixteen bears. I got you good with the dynamic lighting. Oh, the dynamic lighting was fantastic. Dynamic lighting is such a tool. No, it, it, when it when it comes down to to simple things like that, simple things can drive characters back. Um, you know, a, a grease fire. Would, back then, that was a danger to the camp. I mean, goodbye tents. Now you're in the middle of the I don't know Wyoming wilderness with no tent. Prepare to die of exposure at the turn of the century. But yeah, maybe. maybe um... Oh, do you have anything else you want to add on this? Uh, you know, uh, with with pre gen characters. Um, just make sure, you know, just to reiterate the tools, um, pre-gen characters should be able to hit all plot points. All plot points should be able to hit all pre-gen characters. Make sure that they they have some background, but allow those characters to have some motivation, especially if you've got those those players who really want to, um, you know, uh, explore new things and explore new avenues of playing. Uh, if you got the players that are not going to respect any sort of, no matter how much background that you you put into and the hard work that you put into the NBCs, uh, they're gonna, or sorry, the the, the pregens, uh, they're gonna screw around and they're gonna boink and you know, knock, 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 knock. Um, don't 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 waste your time. Um, because remember, good time management is a good part of storytelling, and uh, you know, uh, whatever number that you think are gonna meet your uh, come to your game session, double it, and you should be good to go. Bam. See, I could have done this actual whole podcast episode in like two minutes. Two minutes. We, we just summarized it right there for you there at the end. Thanks, Jared. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure some of our other uh, other listeners have, have dealt more with pre-gens. But... Yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I do have, I guess this is free advertising for whoever runs this site. Because um, I did promise it about two episodes ago that I would, I would find the name of the website. So this is the website that I use all the time for uh, name generation. And it, it's, it's literally fantasynamegenerators.com no spaces uh this website you know has so many tools as a storyteller um okay ladies and gentlemen this is not paid advertising so this is just it is such a tool that i i i I want you to go to the site i want you to experience it it's got names for pubs names for rivers names for cities names for people are is, is they have a swahili name generator Swahili. And at the same time, they have human name generator for Azeroth. You know, doesn't matter. They have a Star Wars name generator. They have, you know, male names, uh, male names, female names, and, and neutral names. Really, if you need names, fantasynamesgenerators.com. Use it. It's a fantastic tool. It'll save you hours. Nice. Nice. Yes. yes I promised exactly. that. So I I I, I deliver. And you deliver. Uh, also, we we did talk about um uh, in our talk about the long campaign episode. Um, Gary gave us another tool that he uses for doing his long campaign and, and tracking all of that. He uses the uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs the uh, the chapter function to be able to uh, write down your chapters. Um, I'm a big proponent of Google Docs. Jared loves the Google products too because you can use them offline and then they sync when you get back home. And, and it's great because like telling you guys as, as someone who travels a lot and, and I go on airplanes where, you know, I, I'm still a little guy in the company, so I don't get to put expense the on, onboard Wi-Fi, So I don't do that. Um, with the Google product, uh, I do set all my documents to where uh, they're being able to be edited online and offline. So, you know, when I board the plane before I do, I up, I get my Google Doc, I open it. Um, it's already set to offline so I can work on it on the plane. And when I get off, 
it automatically syncs in. So when I get to my hotel room and finally, you know, after an end of a, I don't know, 17 hour day, I can then do some gaming stuff. And it's all my ideas from when I was on the planner there. So yeah, thank, thank you, Gary, for, for suggesting that and, and bringing that up, uh, which was something that we hadn't thought of. He also brought up how to track his, um, so he, it sounds like he sort of does episodic in his long chronicle, which is you do this and then there's like a downtime and then he has an after section cool. to keep all of his notes so he can go back to the after section, which is a summary of everything that's in like the four sessions, Cool, which is a, gr- a great way to keep your notes. So uh, just kind of keep an eye on that. Um, and again, if you have thoughts on pre-gen characters, I'm sure some of our listeners do. I know uh, Chris just ran a game with pre-gen characters. Um, you know, let us know your thoughts on motivations and how to kind of uh, do how you do your pre-gen characters, how you get your character, how you get your players into the character motivation, or what sort of motivation you put on the uh, the back end of the character. So you can contact us at level of your gaming podcast at gmail.com or uh, just go ahead and comment on the episode at facebook.com slash level up your gaming. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to bring up that uh, the, those subjects. Um, also, give this podcast to your uh, to your friends, other GMs you know. Share it with your gaming group. Uh, share it on forums. Anybody that you, you kind of commiserate with, uh, you know, help spread the podcast around. Subscribe to it. Uh, leave us reviews on uh, Apple Podcasts. It does help us be more searchable uh, on Apple Podcasts. Even if you don't uh, get us on Apple Podcasts, it is a it is a useful place to have a review there. Um, I think Jared's saying five stars will improve content soon. Something <laughs> like that. Five stars, <laughs> but your comment is will has, has room for improvement. Yeah, it make, make them really confusing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> or not, or just be kind. Um, and uh, if, uh, if you know people don't have podcasts as a medium, uh, we are getting all these episodes up on YouTube as well, uh, and we'll be distributing it there. So smash that like button. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. I can always count on you for that. Damn right. Um, But anyways, uh, thanks for listening again. Uh, And for this week, uh, for Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week, everyone.